13.8 billion years ago, the universe was born, and within a second of its existence, there was gravity, particles, mass, and space. Today, it is incomparably larger and more voluminous, as superclusters of galaxies line the dark matter laid filaments across distances so vast that even the fastest thing within that space takes millions of years to travel meaningful distances. As we learn more about how we think the universe began, we are beginning to look towards the end. How will it become devoid of life, stars, galaxies, or even cease to exist entirely? No one could say for sure what the ultimate fate of the universe will be, but with advancements in technology we are beginning to better understand the metrics and energies that will be instrumental in the end of everything, and the likely possibilities are as unsettling as they are fascinating. In order to predict the distant future of the universe, we must consider three things. The expansion of space-time, the motions of galaxies around us, and lastly, the cause of these behaviours. The first thing to consider is the way that the universe around us is actually expanding. It's easy to think of the universe as this magnificent cosmic crystal ball expanding outwards at the speed of light, but this is far from the truth. When space expands, new space is created everywhere equally. All points in space-time expand at the same rate, from the space between you and your computer to the farthest reaches of the oldest galaxies. The more space expands, the more space there is that can expand, and so the process accelerates with time. Think of it like a balloon inflating, but we are on the outside, not the inside. No matter where we stand on the surface, the surface area always increases at the same rate, and as such, the center is everywhere. This expansion is very weak, and so gravity can hold objects that are gravitationally bound together like you, me, Earth, the rest of the galaxy, and our local galactic group. However, at intergalactic distances beyond the local group, objects are receding away from us, and we see evidence of this through redshift, the process of the universe's expansion elongating visible light, turning it red. This recession means that the larger the present day universe becomes, the larger the distances become between us and other pockets of the universe. The expansion rate is currently estimated to be about 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec. This means that right here, space is expanding in all directions at that rate, but the further out you go, the faster objects are being pushed away from us. A megaparsec is a unit of measurement equivalent to about 3.3 million light years, so at about 6 megaparsecs, or just under 20 million light years away, the space between us and those galaxies is growing at a rate of over 400 kilometers per second. The intergalactic distances between us and galaxies like Messier 87, IC1101 and GNZ11 is growing all the time. This also means that, at a sufficiently distant point, galaxies will be moving away from us faster than light speed. This doesn't break any laws of physics, as they themselves are not moving that fast, but the distance between us and them is growing more than light can travel in the same increment of time. This means that there is a point relative to us beyond which light will never reach us the cosmic event horizon, the boundary that separates our observable universe from the rest of the universe which we will never be able to see or detect. Once galaxies cross this point, they become causally disconnected, and whatever little hope there may have been of transportation, communication, and eventually even observation of any kind will be gone. These galaxies will be lost, and we will never see them again. And the worst part? Over 95% of the galaxies in the observable universe have already crossed this point of no return for travel and communication for us, all because of the aggressive nature of the universe's expansion. But what is causing this kind of expansion? Well, we don't know the underlying mechanisms behind it, but we call it dark energy. Don't let this name fool you, dark energy is simply our term for the giant IOU to future scientists that we currently attribute to the accelerated expansion of the universe. We don't know how or why it works, but leading theories have suggested everything from a naturally occurring byproduct of space, to a new type of energy field, to random fluctuations at the lowest level of interaction. What we do know, however, is that it is responsible for the accelerating expansion of the universe. Normal matter and energy cannot make the universe behave in this way, and as the density of matter falls, the density of dark energy appears to remain consistent, because more of it pops into existence with the increasing volume of space. Light travels along this ever-expanding space and its wavelengths become increasingly redshifted, and this is exactly how we discovered dark energy, when in 1998 the Hi-Z supernova search team analysed distant supernovae and discovered that the universe was not only expanding, but it appeared to be getting faster. It appeared to have expanded more in the latter half of its life. 
when dark energy took over, the universe entered a new era. The dark energy dominated era, marking the point at which matter domination ended, around 9.8 billion years after the Big Bang, a day which would prove to be a tipping point for the universe. With these three things considered, we can start to get a better idea of how the next few trillion years will play out. In several billion years, the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies will collide and merge, and eventually dozens of smaller dwarf galaxies in the local group will also be drawn to this new giant starburst galaxy with the unpopular name Milkdromeda. Everything else beyond our local group pocket was flung beyond our reach in the earliest nanoseconds of time, and so gravity cannot counteract it as it recedes away from us. As the amount of dark energy continues to elongate and expand the universe, even the nearest galaxies to us will cross the cosmic horizon, and within 150 billion years, everything beyond our local supercluster will be invisible and undetectable. This curtain of darkness will continue to swallow everything beyond the boundaries of our galaxy, and eventually it will become impossible to tell that anything exists beyond the edges of Milkdromeda. Nothing intelligent that emerges in this post-intergalactic era will ever be able to know what lies beyond the apparent end of their galaxy, and this will be the same right across the universe. Furthermore, this expansion and recession of the observable universe has as many practical problems as it does existential nightmares. With all galaxies flung beyond the reach of each other, new galaxies will not be able to form, and the current galaxies of the universe will start to die out. New stars will be unable to form as well, and the existing ones will either collapse to white dwarves or go supernova. Gradually, the great fires of the universe will be extinguished, one by one, as the galaxies they formed in become unbound. And then, 100 trillion years in the future, the final long-living red and white dwarves will burn out the last of their fuel and fade into black dwarves, and the universe will know its second dark age. Only this dark age will likely last for an eternity. And before long, one of the universe's primordial signatures will be the last thing to go out. The photons of the CMB will fade further and eventually become undetectable. The afterglow of the Big Bang will glow no more. Even at this point, the universe can still be considered young. Only the supermassive black holes of the universe, seeded perhaps by the primordial black holes which emerged when the universe was only one second old, will survive and at 10 to the power of 40 years, they will have consumed the last of the matter, and will single-handedly dominate the dark, cold universe. This reign will last an unbelievably long time, but it is not eternal. These black holes will eventually evaporate due to Hawking radiation, and perhaps as far as 10 to the power of 100 years in the future, these black holes will finally fizzle out of existence, and the universe will be a dark, cold, sparse void, trillions upon trillions of megaparsecs in diameter. It will then be powerless to its ultimate fate. Exactly what that will be? Well, scientists have narrowed it down to four possible options. What caused the Big Bang? It seems a bit unbelievable that something, especially something like the universe, came from nothing. What makes more sense, or more sense to us at least, is that something came before. And as general relativity developed in the 1900s, a somewhat optimistic hypothesis for the fate of the universe was described. The universe is full of matter, whose properties are determined by mass, and whose interactions are dominated by gravity. More mass means more gravity, which will pull everything together. Currently, we believe that the density of dark energy will remain constant as matter's density falls, but if there's more matter than we currently predict, or less dark energy, then eventually this will cause the universe's expansion to slow down and ultimately stop, and it will then begin contracting as the gravity of the objects within pulls it back in on itself. If this theory is correct, then within a few trillion years, causally disconnected galaxies will be flung back within our reach, causing galaxy mergers all over the place, resulting in the births of millions of new galaxies, instead of them all dying out in secluded pockets. However, this contraction is unsustainable, because as the volume of the universe shrinks, the density and temperature within rises. Eventually, stars and planets will be fried from the outside as the universe is transformed, and even atoms will break apart into unbound elementary particles. In fact, all that will be able to survive are the black holes of the universe, and these will gradually merge into larger and larger black holes as they are brought within range of each other by the ever-shrinking universe. 
In the final moments of cosmic time, these black holes will unite and merge into one gigantic ultra-massive black hole trillions of times more massive than anything we can currently observe, and it will contain the entire universe's information. Finally, this black hole will consume all of space-time, devouring itself in the process, and return the universe to that which it came from, an infinitesimally small and dense singularity. Some people even take this a step further, and suppose that we live in an oscillatory universe, and that the contraction back into a singularity will ultimately trigger a similar chain of events to those of the Big Bang, and a new universe would emerge and rapidly expand, forming new space with similar attributes in a cyclical fashion. Some believe that this has been happening forever, and will continue to happen at infinitum. Crazy sh**, right? During the 1900s, the Big Crunch and Big Bounce were front-running theories, and we're even making puzzling discoveries indicating some sort of past universe to support this. Only six months ago, as of the making of this video, did the BICEP2 radio telescope of the BICEP and Keck array pick up what has been described as apparent evidence for Hawking points, the remnants of supermassive black holes which evaporated in a previous universe, but whose imprints carried over into the next one. These points represent anomalous areas of the cosmic microwave background which appear to be sources of vast amounts of energy. And so, while models which rely on the universe contracting have been challenged by recent dark energy theories, the question of whether the universe is oscillatory is still very much up for debate. In 1998, we discovered that the universe was not only expanding, but that its expansion was accelerating, and as such the Big Crunch now has some major doubts over it, as it is believed that gravity will not be able to counteract the endless expansion by dark energy. We still don't understand how dark energy works, but what we do know is that it is almost certainly bad news. And there's another pretty big problem. We know the universe began as unimaginable heat and energy, and it's cooled ever since. Down below the different thresholds for symmetry breaking, nucleosynthesis and chemistry to occur, and it's still cooling today. But with a little help from dark energy, it is on course to meet an irreversible temperature minimum, the end of all heat in the universe, also known as the heat death or big freeze. As the name suggests, it refers to the end of all differences in heat in the universe. Heat is a product of energy. Matter in the universe needs some kind of energy, either directly or indirectly, for things to happen, and every process that performs work and uses energy gives off waste heat. These processes proceed in a way which reduces the availability of the remaining energy during the energy transfer. Energy flows from a concentrated form which can be used, to a dispersed form which is useless. If new energy cannot be created, then the share of the universe's energy which is wasted aka its entropy, will continue to increase. In the far future, after the final black holes have evaporated, all energy in the universe will be in this dispersed state, entropy will be at maximum, and there won't be any temperature energy gradient to allow information processing. Simply put, nothing will ever be able to happen again. Matter will gradually break apart into radiation over a long time, and the entire universe will consist of a light cloud of photons, and even this will decay with time. It's like ice melting into a glass of water, the loss of all gradient. The big freeze will bring the universe to just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero, at which point it will be a homogeneous sparse skeleton. Dark energy will expand this dead, unrecognisable universe to indescribable sizes, and then Perhaps it will just linger there for an eternity. Perhaps there exist ancient universes which have already undergone heat deaths. Perhaps dark energy will curse the universe so that its second dark age lasts forever. Or perhaps it will destroy it entirely. We are just becoming aware of dark energy's role in the fate of the universe, but there's still a long way to go. The discovery of accelerating expansion of the universe is not a good thing, but the real situation could be even worse. We currently think that dark energy remains constant throughout space, but another possibility is that it works inversely to the normal energy fields, and its density is in fact increasing. The current density of dark energy is very low, but if this increases over time then there's going to come a day where it becomes denser than the structures of the cosmos, such as stars, galaxies and planets. In this scenario, gravity will no longer be able to hold the structure together and the object will be torn apart, right down to its atoms. 
This means that at some point in the future, dark energy will exceed a density at which galaxies start becoming unbound and unstable. Before long, the planetary systems of these stars will become scattered, and then the density of dark energy would exceed that of planets, and every star, planet and moon is pulled apart down to an atomic level, and then down to unbound elementary particles. And the expanding universe would be so voluminous that no elementary particle would ever encounter another one. The universe would be completely ripped down to its finest pixels, and some speculate that even space-time itself would tear and would cease to exist. Dark energy is not our friend, be it the big freeze or the big rip, it means that the universe is unsustainable to life, heat, and maybe even its own existence. So far, we've only focused on the fate of the universe occurring everywhere, but it's possible that somewhere, a random anomaly has caused a chain of events to take place right now which is erasing the universe like a cancer as opposed to a delete button. This is all thanks to a theoretical chain reaction called vacuum decay. Everything in the universe wants to reach its vacuum state, aka a steady state with as little energy as possible. The same principle applies to the quantum fields which govern our universe, the same fields which determine the laws for particle interaction. They want to reach their vacuum state too. As far as we know, all of these fields reached their vacuum state in the universe long ago, apart from one, the Higgs field which happens to be the field that gives particles their mass. In 2012, scientists at CERN used the Large Hadron Collider to identify what we think might be the long-sought Higgs boson, but when we estimated its mass, we discovered something unsettling. The Higgs field appears stable when it actually isn't. It may be in a state of false vacuum. It appears stable because it is at a local minimum of energy, but it still has hidden potential energy left to give, which puts it in a highly precarious state. Think of it like standing on the edge of a cliff. The universe may have to be in this knife edge state for stuff to happen, like the formations of stars and galaxies, but it also means that this balance could be, and inevitably will be, disturbed with disastrous consequences for its surroundings. If a quantum effect, such as quantum tunneling, led to a disturbance in the balance of the Higgs field and a lower energy state is possible, then this hidden potential energy will be released as the area reaches a less energetic state, and the resulting effect on space-time is like throwing a match into a lake filled with petrol. This point of disturbance would create a brand new universe within ours, a so-called true vacuum. This spherical vacuum would expand outwards at the speed of light as it releases this huge amount of potential energy, completely destroying everything it engulfs and leaving everything within its bounds shredded down to its elementary particles. Within this new vacuum universe, the laws of physics would be overwritten, completely changing the properties of elementary particles and the way they interact. Chemistry and information processing would be impossible, and no atoms or molecules can form in such an environment. The scary thing about these theoretical bubbles is that they could be anywhere, and could start at any time. There may be bubbles of true vacuum out there right now which are devouring their surroundings, but are too distant to ever bother us. Even if one did engulf us, we'd never see it coming. They expand at almost light speed and there's no stopping them either way. Everything would just be erased and unbound down to elementary particles, in a kind of cosmic Thanos snap. There's no telling how much of the universe, if any, is in true vacuum state, but if the share is high enough, then the majority of the universe will have undergone this big change into a true vacuum state and this may have a profound effect on the way dark energy expands space-time, maybe even inducing the opposite effect. Dark energy will begin pulling the vacuum universe back in on itself, which may ultimately lead this event to some variation of the Big Crunch hypothesis. It's unlikely, but these vacuum bubbles are possible, and perhaps even statistically likely to be occurring somewhere in the vast expanse of space. Luckily, however, because most of the space in the universe is causally disconnected from us, as long as a bubble never begins inside the local group, we will never be affected by other true vacuums, one of the few advantages of being confined into this dark, lonely pocket of the ever-expanding universe.
the big crunch, the big freeze, the big rip, the big change. These are the four ways in which our universe could meet its destiny. In reality, the heat death will likely be the winner. The big crunch has been all but ruled out in its current form due to the discovery of dark energy, but perhaps some variant of the process will give the universe a second chance to see another age, or even a new universe entirely. Our quest to know the truth comes from our desire to find our place in all of it. Will life exist after the universe? Does it already exist beyond it? These are the questions that we want to know, but humanity has far more pressing concerns to address before the heat death. In little over 6,000 years, we've learned a staggering amount about the nature of our universe and our existence. Imagine what we could uncover and learn if we gave ourselves a better chance of long-term survival as a species. If the human race prevails for thousands or even millions of years, we might be able to observe the mechanisms that will determine our universe's ultimate fate with our own eyes, rather than lying solely on our predictions and equations. Until that time, however, we know everything will come to an end, so we may as well just enjoy the ride.